that's all we proceed. Uh, I should probably say I'm not a clinician and I've only been working for the NHS two and a half years. To put that into context, I've been working in the NHS as long as Theresa May has been negotiating Brexit. So, um, I, but I'm going to talk to you about where we've, we've come to in Wales. And my background is actually, my professional background is engaging the disengaged. So I spent a lot of years working with teenagers who were disengaging from school. I'm a qualified primary school teacher. And then I spent some time working in prison as well. So engaging the disengaged in diabetes is something I'd like to bring some of those skills towards. But I've also been living with type 1 diabetes since 1990. So I guess I feel incredibly um, proud to be able to have done some of the work that I have and tried to combine those skills. But I'm going to actually tell you about the first time I saw this slide, which was about uh, four years ago now. I was at a Diabetes UK conference on transition. And I'd been invited along to talk about two minutes about what peer support had done for me um, when I was struggling with my diabetes in my early 20s. And this slide left me feeling three things. First of all, I thought, wow, so far, my experience is pretty normal. Then I thought, hang on, that peaks at about nine, and my hb one peaked at about 15. So I wish that had been my experience. And the third thought that probably brings me to standing in front of you today is, well, if we know this is going on, why are we not doing something completely different to help what is weather this storm? Because this is an incredibly difficult time for young people with diabetes, and I didn't realise I was going to put myself forward to try and help that in Wales, but that's what I'm going to come and talk to you about. So this is weather in the storm, and how do we do that? So I'm going to ask you to play a little game with me, if that's okay. Um, I haven't got any alcohol for anybody who's played this game before. Sorry to disappoint, but if you do work with um, young people with diabetes in the clinical setting, can I please ask you to stand on your feet? And we're going to do this three times. So if I can ask everybody to stand if you work with young people. I know some people are admin support and different things. Okay, so if what comes up in the black writing has been your experience, I'm going to ask you to sit down. And when I've done this in Wales, some of the consultants get really confused by the double negative. <laughs> so, <laughs> ignore the blue, but if you've had a person in clinic with diabetes come into your clinic that's forgotten their meter, please can you sit down? <laughs> One person standing. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm not trivialising this at all, but it does have a point. So I'm going to ask you to stand again, if that's okay. Never have I ever had a person with diabetes attend clinic with what you believe is made-up results. And it's harder to do this these days. Okay, just a second. I've not done this with these people still standing. Okay, don't let me down on this one. Never have I ever not believed someone when they said they are taking their insulin. <laughs> See, there's always somebody that gets confused. Okay. This is really common and it's a problem that we're all coming up against. And so that led me to think, well, why do people with diabetes feel they can't be honest with the people who spend years training to help them? Where in the system do we create something that people can't say, I'm really struggling? And so, for the first year in row, I went around and I spoke to young people in any context that could be. So whether I saw them in it when I observed clinics, or whether they wanted to speak to me over a coffee. But my job allows time to, to really try and get them to talk to me. And I never went out and asked this question, but every time they compared their diabetes to something else, I made a note of it so I could feed this back to you. And so, these are some of the things that gets told to me quite often. So, it's just... I feel like I'm drowning in it. It's overwhelming. It's the third person in my relationship. It doesn't matter what I do, it's just always there in the background. A 16-year-old girl that doesn't have a child has turned around and said, it's like the child I haven't had yet, and I take my mind off it for one minute, and it's like it's written above the wall. And I think that was her blood sugar going higher. Uh, a 17-year-old girl said to me, it's really not fair. It's like a whole subject I have to study that's alongside my four A-levels. Someone else has said, it just fries my brain. It's so much to learn. And what they tell me and what happens, <coughs> normally are not, they, they make no connection. Someone else said, it's really tiring all the time to put 100% effort in and not really see those that come back in the numbers that you see. 
Someone else has said it's like continuously balancing on the tightrope, and I've read that some days it's like walking on a tightrope whilst on a bicycle while the bicycle wheels are on fire. And as somebody who lives with type 1 diabetes, there are certainly days I can relate to. Somebody else has said it's like, it's not quite prison, but there's never an escape from it. Someone else has said, it's just really confusing. They tell me to do this, and my blood sugars don't correlate. And if anybody follows me on Twitter, uh, I run uh, Type 1 Hurdles, which is just me sort of documenting the things I wish I'd seen when I was a struggling teenager. And so I try and think that actually I can overcome anything that throws at me, providing the support is in the right place. So that might be a blood glucose that's out of range, or it could be losing the sight in my eye for 18 months. But if the support is there in the way that I need it, there's nothing I can't overcome. But I don't believe the support is there in the way young people need it. And it doesn't matter what you do, this will turn your life upside down. And alongside this, I went and I did a lot of listening to people who work in this field. And <coughs> I've got to be honest, I get really frustrated on a daily basis with some of the things that I hear. And we've got some brilliant clinicians, but we've also got some that I think get a little bit confused by this whole transition process. One of the things we always talk about is she transitioned. If you go into school and someone said to me, Miss, I'm not going to be in school on Friday, I've got transition clinic. In 2019, that's going to have a very different meaning and nobody is going to have that correlating to diabetes or any other condition in the NHS. What are we talking about when we talk about transition? It's one more process that young people who've already got a lot of worries need to worry about. What does this mean? Why do we not just say it's young adult clinic or they move into adult services? That's what it is. But also, um, you know, I heard, well, it's transition, it's a paediatric problem, right? I don't know if you'd agree with me in this room, but this is some of the things I thought, really? Um, well, Sarah, it's been this way for 20 years, and I'm like, I don't know if, you know, what's worse, the fact it's been this way for 20 years, or you've known it's been a problem for 20 years. I've heard another consultant say, well, type 1 diabetes is easy, they just have to take their insulin. Interesting topic, diabolimia, but we don't really see much of this in paediatrics, and that's, uh, that statement really worries me, and I think that's something that we'll see a lot more talk of in the next couple of years. <coughs> and well, the thing is, we've tried a young adult clinic, they just don't bother coming, and they, they don't bother coming because they don't value the time that we put in, because it doesn't work for them in the way that it should. But nevertheless, I did see a lot of good practice going on as well in amongst all of this. And I tried to put all of that work into a document and find some answers that can really help our staff who are really trying to help young people. And so I come up with the one with the really long title. It doesn't have the word transition near it, and I think I've just uh, tried to explain why I don't think the word transition is helpful for young people. But it's the all well standard for people with diabetes moving from paediatrics into adult services. It's got the three key components there that you need to get this to work better. There's no getting away from it. You'll be on the title somewhere, whichever side of the fence you work in. And there's 16 recommendations that I took to Welsh Government, and I'm actually telling you a lie there. There's 44 recommendations of what I think it's going to take to get a better service. And Welsh Government said, there's far too many recommendations. We cannot give that. Don't take any out, and can you add these two in? So there's actually 16 recommendations which are in little paragraphs. But much of this was based on good practice observed in Wales and in England as well when I spoke to some of my colleagues across the border. So I would uh, sort of tell you to have a look at it if you think that there's something in you that can help your service. And, uh, well, hopefully that we'll start to see a difference. But some of the key themes in there, and this really gets me, sometimes when we say that things have been developed with families and young people with diabetes, it's normally at the bottom, and I think it should be at the very top. If you're going to try and do something, involve them from the very beginning. It's been developed with young people, their families and healthcare staff across Wales, all feeding in at various opportunities. It's been, what we're trying to do is establish a dedicated young adult service for those up to 25. Joint working between paediatrics and adult colleagues between the ages of 16 and 19. We want to de develop better relationships between paediatrics, adults and young people before they move. And I think that's key. Because as life steps up and they're going to start struggling, they're not going to ask for help with somebody they don't have a relationship with. Uh, we're also looking at developing age-appropriate and specific information and education that's available about managing type 1 diabetes and life. We can't just look at type 1 diabetes in isolation. And so the second phase of my work has been to develop Seren Connect, which is a group education that we'll be seeing in our clinics this year. 
Uh, we're also looking at other things like um, involving a full-time youth worker employed to work across paediatrics and adult services. And that's getting some good feedback and it's actually in Justin's service if you want to talk to him about that. Um, we recognise the need for dedicated psychology input into young adult services and this is a really tricky area um, but it's definitely something I think is needed. Uh, there's looking about developing referral pathways to support young people with eating disorders and or insulin omission. And that's another subject of mine that I'm really passionate about. Um, it's also about including young onset type 2 diabetes, as we know these don't have very great outcomes either, and looking at appropriate type 2 education. The numbers are small, but they are increasing. Um, and there's lots of focus on increased engagement and focus on language. Um, I think sometimes the way we talk about diabetes increases the stigma, and I it's really hard to change a habit, but it's something I think we all need to work at. Uh, looking at communication, a uh, place for peer support and service flexibility for up to 25. So it's all well and good me standing up here and saying this is what you should be doing, but what does that mean for people on the ground and the staff that I work with? So I'm now going to introduce Vicky and uh, Lucy, who are from Prince Charles Hospital, and they're going to talk to you about some of the changes they've made and the feedback that that's having within their team. So thank you very much. Thank you.